My name is uh, Bryson Williams. I'm the owner of Apex Livestock and Supply here in Lot, Texas. Uh, I've been raising goats for about eight or nine years uh, now. Uh, originally raised commercial goats when I was young as a 4-H and FFA project in the last uh, five or six years has turned into a competitive um, show go business. Um, originally from the panhandle between Lubbock and Amarillo, a small town, Olton, Texas, and Lamb County. Um, and I've recently moved to Central Texas the last three or four months now. Um, as I said earlier, we're in a show go business and we're a little more central to the business that we want to really shine in uh, now here. Um, at the moment, we have a little under 200 does with recips, um, in that we focus really hard on our uh, ET program, our embryo transfer, and then AI, our artificial insemination. Um, we sell show projects to 4-H and FFA exhibitors uh, across the U.S., uh, primarily California, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Texas, and slightly into the southeast and beginning to reach into the Midwest market. Um, we'll have babies anywhere from, well, the earliest now, we'll have through October to June. Um, and this next year, we want to do it year round, uh, having babies. We primarily tried to breed, focusing in July, August, October, November. We don't want to have too many open does through the first part of the year. Hopefully we have everything covered by the first of the year. Um, we do that so we can reach several different markets across the U.S., um, primarily Texas, where we have babies from March and April, some late February babies. Um, and through that we focus, like I said, uh, really intensely on our artificial insemination and embryo transfer programs. Uh, today we just finished a flush um, with frozen semen that we used last week on artificial insemination. Um, and it was, we had fair success today. We've had anywhere from, we put some, uh, we've had high numbers before, and today was just fair. The only thing about the ET is it's uh, something you can't always bank on. Uh, we fought Mother Nature fairly hard and heavy with. Um, and with that, we still have a try to keep a large amount of just regular does that we breed naturally, just pin breeding, just kicking bucks out. That way we can always have a certain amount of does bred all the time. Um, we have two people that we work with heavily. Uh, Mr. Steve Sturts from Wall, Texas. He does a lot of our AI work. Um, he'll do some buck collection and someone we lean on for advice as well. Uh, today, Mr. Earl Peacock from Covington, Texas was here doing our flush work. We've used a few different people for our flush program. Uh, we've had as much success with him as anybody and location-wise, we're only about an hour, hour and a half away from him, and it makes it really uh, user-friendly, if you will. Um, so he just left shortly ago, and he'll be back again the 22nd of the same month. Hopefully we can schedule him again for a November flush. Um, the biggest reason we use programs like that, AI and ET work, is so we can close a smaller window um, as far as when we're gonna have babies. We can really pinpoint that. With our AI especially, with the ET work, we really want to emphasize on our better females, the ones that produce, and in my case, make the most money. So we focus on those select few females that we put a lot of work and time into and try to multiply the success there, if you will. Um, at the moment, uh, it's myself, and then I have two business partners from out of state that I lean on uh, for financial reasons at times. Um, the things that we do cost a lot of money too, initially, and I lean on them for things like that. Um, the majority of the time, my girlfriend, Emily June Kelly, who lives in the Panhandle, helps me often with things um, as far as the legwork. 
Uh, at the moment, it's it's me here full time. It's what I do full time, as far as a business. Um, it's how I provide income for myself and pay for things that I do. Um, it's a good business to be in if you don't mind the work. It's a 24-7 job. Uh, you can ask those close to me. I can't always leave all the time. Uh, there's a lot of babysitting to do. I uh, made the comment we have a little under 200 does here. Uh, we do a lot of dry lot feeding where we keep hay out, but we feed a lot of feed, and those animals don't eat unless somebody are feeding them. Um, we do grow some hay close by. Um, we feed a lot of that hay in the pens. We don't do a lot of grazing. Uh, in this part of the world, we struggle with parasites, worms, and things of that nature. Uh, so we try to feed a lot and do uh, less grazing because we fight those parasites so hard. Um, through the inside of the barn, we have a nice uh, working system where we can really monitor what we uh, are doing to those does. We run them in a few times a month, it seems like lately. Um, worming and giving shots and things like that, antibiotics, vaccines, and things to fight parasites, both in and out of those animals. Um, worms, lice, coccidiosis, things like that. Um, we struggle with some foot rot in this area as well. We have to use strong antibiotics to try to stay ahead of that. Um, we use some vaccines as well as far as fighting pastorella, Chlamydia, um, any kind of pre breeding vaccines as well, so we can stay ahead of our stick rate, especially on our AI and ET females. Um, several people in Texas that we lean on for advice. Uh, there's several breeders in this area, and then, like I said, for us, we use um, a few people heavily. Uh, there's another guy in College Station we use, Colt Sharpton. He does a lot of our ultrasound work um, and some buck collection as well. He's from College Station. Um, anything you have, Heidi, that you might want to ask? Um, for your vaccination protocol, do you have the normal routine health vaccination that you do once a year in addition to your uh, reproduction vaccinations? So on our newborn babies, we give a CDT shot. It's clostridium deficiency and tetanus. Um, we do that twice. It's a, a two-part treatment. Um, we use that on our babies, and, and, and now we're really focusing hard on our pastorella pneumonia uh, program. It's something that I've struggled with uh, recently, the last year in the Panhandle and even here. Um, so we're fighting that um, with some advice from, from several people there. Um, and then we use our chlamydia vaccine, like we said. On top of that, we'll use a CL vaccine and then a uh, sore mouth vaccine as well, this time for the first time. So the main ones we focus on are, on our newborns are CDT, Pastorella, CL, and sore mouth. Um, those things along with some antibiotics we give throughout the year, especially when it comes to banding and dehorning. We use a lot of LA-200, Polyflex, and penicillin, um, three different types of antibiotics we use. Um, when we have respiratory issues, Batril is a product we use uh, really heavily. Um, Batril is faster acting. We use Exceed when we're mash treating. We use Batril when we're spot treating for when we know we're sick. We use Exceed for mash treating when we think we're fixing to come into a problem or we've had large issues with groups. Um, we use Draxin for some spot treating as well on a more severe case. Um, we use uh, Dexamethasone when we have issues with uh, more inflammatory issues or things of that nature. Um, we use thiamine. In this area, we have a thiamine deficiency. We use a lot of 
thiamine, and even in, in the panhandle especially, we have a big selenium deficiency. Mm-hmm. So we use products like Multimin and Bosi that can help with our selenium deficiencies. Um, Bosi is a product we use often as well with our young ones. Uh, thiamine is a good one as well. Uh, we give B12. B12 and B12 comp. B12 and B complex uh, injectables um, to just spark some energy and some consumption issues as well, um, just to kickstart their immune system in the same breath. Um, on our feed program, we get we get feed made locally. It's a heavy concentrate of corn, dry distillers, grain, and cottonseed. Um, we use that as a general population feed. Along with that, we feed a pellet that has a product called Remensin in it to control coccidiosis issues that we have. Um, a big issue in small ruminants, especially in your goats, is coccidiosis. Um, those of you might notice a uh, loss of weight or consumption or a bloodied stool, you probably have a coccidiosis issue, or if you have trouble with weight gain in your smaller animals, you either have a coccidiosis or a worm issue. Uh, two things we fight heavily. Um, so in the feed that we make custom or that we try to buy and, and add money to in order to not starve a profit, we look for products with remensin in it. We uh, also fight some urinary cal- calculi issues in our male offspring and keeper bucks and bucks that we use heavily. So we want to make sure our Feed products have a decent amount of ammonium chloride in them as well. We fight uh, some zinc issues also in our feed. Um, you can use Multimin to help with that. We want a high level of zinc in our feed as well for fighting some issues with hoof rot and libido with our males as well. Um, we talked about our wormers. Um, We fight worms really bad in this area. In Central Texas, our rainfall is really high. Worming products that we use, we use uh, an injectable wormer called Cydectin um, every three to four months. It seems like lately, pre-breeding, we've used wormers heavily, uh, especially every, seems like every seven to 10 days we've done something different, um, or 10 to 14, seven to 14. We use uh, some white wormers, Falbazin is the stoutest, Pancure, and Safeguard. When we use those products, Pancure and Safeguard, we use usually three days in a row or double dose those products. Um, We use a uh, Poron as well. Not many people use a Poron, uh, but we're trying it now. We use an Ivermectin Poron. we fight lice as well, so we use products like Prolate and Silence to help with our flea, tick, and lice issues. Um, my motto the last few years is if we can keep the bugs out of them and off of them, we'll be ahead of the curve. If we can keep those things out and off of them and eating feed, we'll be ahead of a lot of people. You'll notice a big difference in consumption if we can keep those things uh, off of the goats or in or out. Um, Along with that, we trim hoofs, not nearly enough, but uh, we want to focus on, you know, two or three times a year. Um, We feed a lot of feed, and with that, hoofs grow a little faster. Um, If you don't stay ahead of your hoof issue, and you feed a lot of feed, you'll have issues with foundering things of that nature, um, you'll notice immense, immense hoof growth when you're feeding a high concentrated feed. Um, those of you that get to graze a rocky soil will notice that you won't have to trim hoofs as much. In the panhandle, we had a really sandy area. We needed to trim hoofs more often than we did. Um, really, uh, when we talk about grazing, small ruminants, especially goats, we wanted rougher forage um, in this area. A lot of good hay is grown, uh, but for consumption or palatability reasons, 
small ruminants don't love any type of grass. It seems like our Bermuda or, or coastal Bermuda or love grass or blue stem or anything like that is really rough. So we feed a really hot feed, a really high protein feed. So this rougher, uh, lower budget, lower quality feed, if you will, uh, works good for us because it just keeps something scratching their gut. Uh, when we really want to put weight on or push our goats, we feed things like oat hay or some type of cane, a red top cane, some type of sorghum.